Hey guys, it's Daniel again, and this is Boss C351's Productions. Today we have a, another prequel video. The subject matter for this video is going to be piston ring sizing, also known as ring filing. What is piston ring sizing and why do you call it ring filing? Well, when you get your rings from Ford, normally they are they have a set gap. All you have to do is install them on the pistons, install the pistons, and you're good to go. Well, with aftermarket pistons, that's a different story. I've gone with the manly rods, manly pistons, and mainly, mainly piston rings, which are the Total Seal APs. Now, when I talk about piston ring gap, this is one of the rings. When you put it inside the cylinder, it's going to shrink that gap down much, much smaller than it than you normally see here. Okay, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to meet certain tolerances set by the manufacturer. And on my chart here, I've got these tolerances. Now on the top chart, this is the total seal APs. This is their recommendations. Now this is up to 15 pounds of boost here and this is 15 to 30 pounds of boost here with these particular pistons and with the turbo setup i've got going on we're going to go with up to 15 psi uh, boost on the engine we're not going to try to go this high this high this this over here is what i've got on my 2013 ford f-150 and we'll have some of that later on down the road we'll talk about it so the first ring your requirement is 20 thousandths of an inch your second ring is 20 thousandths of an inch your oil rings which there's two of them must be at least 15 thousandths of an inch the reason why is they do not want the rings to butt together when the engine heats up otherwise if you only have just say 10 thousandths of an inch and you get you know, a high boost situation like towing, the engine gets hotter and hotter. Well, the rings can contact each other, butt together, and then you got major problems. You'll start destroying pistons, you'll destroy, you know, your block, and you don't want that. Now, below here, this is for the guys that have ordered their rings from Ford. These are the requirements here. Now, the boost, uh, listings here have nothing to do with this down here. Ford does not list it by boost. They just have these specifications. Six to ten thousandths of an inch on the first ring. Eleven thousandths to twenty-one thousandths of an inch on the second ring. And five to seventeen thousandths of an inch on the oil rings. Now down here on the table are a few things you're going to need to successfully uh, file your rings. Now, as you can see, I've got two different ring filers here. This is the one that I started with that I did the rings on the, my 2013 Ford F-150 FX4. This is one that I picked up, it's new. I have never used it before until now. Also, we have a square now you can either use the new piston to press the rings down the cylinder to get them square, or you can take a square like this one, set it at one inch, and go around the cylinder pressing the ring down till you have it exactly one inch down on the cylinder. Also, you're gonna need a set of filler gauges. Now, a word of caution. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you on this because I messed up and I messed up really. I ruined three of my top rings with my new ring filer. Had no idea that, you know, taking it down for 15 minutes, you know, from what I was doing before and three seconds on this one, the low speed on the drill and the ring was destroyed. What happened was I would hold this here and I'd turn it just like that. Hold the ring up against it and it over filed. It filed out one of my rings all the way to uh, 30 thousandths gap, which essentially just destroyed the ring. 
So I have had to order a whole new set of rings just to, to cover my screw up. I'm gonna hold on to those rings because I've got a whole nother engine to do and I don't wanna have to go through this again. So with these ring filers, especially this one, this type here with that kind of wheel, you're gonna have to be extra, extra, extra careful. File lightly for half a second to a second, take it out, put it in the cylinder, check it. It, it, it is just better off that way and take it from me. I'm having to wait a whole nother week before I can start my engine build just because I messed this up. While we're on the subject of piston rings, I wanna go ahead and talk to you about piston ring placement on the piston. Now I have another diagram here. This is the piston. Of course, the top of the piston's up here, bottom of the piston's here. Your wrist pin's gonna go through here. All right. You have to arrange the rings a certain way on the piston before you place them in the block. And this is the proper way to do it. Your expander ring gap range is right in here. They give you a large range to put it in. Your expander goes on first before your two oil rings go on. It's, it's, it's doesn't really look like a ring. It looks like a mesh of metal. Now your bottom oil ring, which goes on top of the ring expander goes right here. The gap goes right here. So when you put it on second, you put the gap here. Your top oil ring, which also goes over the expander, goes here. Next in line is gonna be your second ring, your compression ring. The gap goes here on the piston. And of course, the last ring, which is your top ring, the gap goes up here. So, starting at the bottom, you're gonna have your expander ring gap, your bottom oil ring gap, your top oil ring gap, your second oil, uh, uh, compression ring gap, and your top ring gap right here. To have them spaced out that way is less likely to leak oil and compression with them staggered like that than if you put them all in line. If you have all the gaps in line, then it's just a straight path for oil to get through and a straight, straight path for your compression to leak out. Now I'm gonna show you how this uh, ring filer works. I've got one of my runt rings, so I'm not gonna worry about having to mess anything up to show an example, because it's already messed up. What I did is put it on a drill. It's, it was a lot easier for me to put it on a drill than use that handle. Maybe I should have used the handle anyway. But what I do, I just get it going. You want, you want to file this way on the ring gap. You never want to file that way. You always file this way. So you just get it going just a slight bit. None, none of this fast stuff, just a slight bit. This is all that it takes. You want to put the ring against the two stops and then rotate the ring over into the wheel. And that right there was probably enough. It probably knocked off three to four thousandths off of the ring gap. Now with this particular one, this one's a little bit more of a pain to use, but what you have to do is you have to hold the ring down, hold it against the stops, and then this right here. That's not any fun. Now you, know, you see why it took me forever when I was doing my other engine. And it's tedious. Boy, it's tedious. But that's how you use that one. Now, there's other companies out there that sell electric ring uh, filers. If you got the money to do that, more power to you. I don't have 300 extra dollars for a ring filer that I'll use just for an engine and then put it up somewhere. 
Now, here's an example of how you get, you determine what your ring gap is in the block. You want to take your ring, push it together, put it down in the block, and then rotate it. Don't just try to cram it down in there all together. You want to do just like that, and you want to rotate your ring to make sure it goes in without scratching the cylinder. Take your square, work it away, work your way around, get the ring down, just like this. Make sure you don't push it any further down than one inch. Hi. Once you get it down in there, now you can see there's a little bit off. Now we got the ring exactly one inch down in the cylinder. So we're gonna take our feeler gauge and we're gonna run our feeler gauge through the gap. Of course, this one's way too big. Like I said, I overdid it on this one. This is a 20 thousandths feeler gauge. What you want is a slight drag. Work on the rings until you get a slight drag. If you get anything where you're walking back and forth, the rings are not might as well throw it in the trash and start over again. So that is how you check the rings in the block. Now, my suggestion to you, every set of rings that you do, let's say we'll do the top ring, middle ring, and the two oil rings in this end, and this particular set of rings will stay with this cylinder. Same thing with the next one and the next one. When you, when you file the rings, you wanna associate it with the cylinder that you're filing it for, just in case there's a few tolerances that are different for, from the next cylinder or an opposite cylinder on the block. And the last thing, but not least, that I wanna to mention to you that you need to do when you put your pistons in the block, and I'll show you that during the build-up process in the build-up video. You wanna grab you a bottle or two of Type F automatic transmission fluid. Type F is what's recommended by all the engine builders, and what you're gonna do is you're going to soak the cylinders, each cylinder with the Type F, as well as the rings uh, and the head of the piston. Don't overdo it, but you wanna soak them, make sure they're all wet. What that does is it assists with break-in of the piston rings, along with your oil that you're gonna use, your break-in oil. That way the rings will match to the cylinders and you won't have compression leaks or oil leaks. Do not use any kind of synthetic oil. That is a no-no. Once again, this is Daniel with Ball C 351's Productions. Thank you for watching my video. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Click on that bell. If I helped you out, if any of the information that I give you on any of my videos help you out, please consider donating to my channel. Once again, thank you for watching.